Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio here in our step-by-step -step to Mega Base series. In today's episode, it's finally time to finish the base game, meaning crafting the white science pack and launching our first rocket. However, this is truly only the beginning of the end game and where we're finally going to be able to dive into creating our mega factory. So without any further ado, let's get things started by probably first copying over one of these smelter designs. Now we're gonna need quite a few smelters and I think the way we're gonna do this is we're simply gonna attach them here on the top. I want to flip this around so it points towards the bottom. The flow is gonna be towards the bottom. We probably wanna leave enough space. Let's say this is gonna be the first location here. Then we need a second smeltery for the copper. As a matter of fact, if we go with the red belt design, we're gonna need four of these to finish the contraption. So let's maybe take apart some of these power poles get that fourth smeltery going and that would be everything we need for the copper. Then let's get rid of some more of these power poles. I'm gonna need two additional smelters for the iron. This is then gonna leave us this amount of space to make it happen. Hopefully it's enough. <laughs> let's go ahead and keep on researching everything that we still can. We might actually be able to finish that before we finish the factory. And I think I'm gonna be needing some more stuff. Robots bring me materials, but also let's add one more crafting set up to get these smelters in the joint. Steel furnace, that's what I require. We're gonna copy the recipe over and then set up one stack. We're gonna keep about two stacks of these, that should be plenty. Get this fed and then, oh wait, this needs to be over here. Another thing I would like to do is build two more robo ports and we're gonna set them up over here to expand our logistics grid. So one is gonna go there and then another one here at the bottom. And then luckily enough we have the space right here in order to set this up without any gaps in the system. And with that out of the way we keep on building here, get all these belts down. Oh actually another thing we might want to go ahead and craft is the lamp. I don't think we have that set up just yet. Yeah we can definitely make use of the lamp recipe here. Shouldn't be too hard, just some iron plates, copper cables and circuits. Though we do need to order all of these materials. That means we should be able to add the steel furnace here. Just one stack should be enough for now. And then one stack of lamps to my inventory would be nice as well. And then I guess we just keep on building here. My robots are gonna take over from now on. Let's maybe also connect the power. Now let's see, do we even have the space for proper balancer setups here? I'm not so sure. Maybe I should have left a tiny bit more space. But that would be our copper balancer and all we have to do is basically lead it into the line right there. And we can keep going with this for each of the copper smelters we set up right there. Another line going into this one I guess and then we have two more lines for the iron. So we're gonna drag this over, one iron there and another iron. Ooh, ran out of belts already again. Yeah, this is actually looking fairly decent. The only problem is gonna be to ship the coal in here. Let me finish the balancer for the iron. And that means I somehow have to hop over here, which I don't think is possible even with the blue belts. Ooh, actually it is possible. Ah, this is amazing. So we can just keep going with the blue belts here. So set up a splitter here. This goes into the blue underground belt and then the other line can continue. So now we have access to four lines of copper, two of iron and then one of coal. So far I like it, let's get my robots to build some more of that stuff. Now I almost forgot for the furnaces we actually need some stone bricks. Let's build a filter inserter, extract the stone bricks here and then all I have to do is bring them close enough to my logistics area which here it is already. So we can just set up a passive provider chest, add that right here and then we're gonna fill it up with the stone bricks. Maybe get five stacks of that going and give this some power. And just like that we have access to stone bricks, some robots should be coming along and bringing those to the furnace recipe. I think I'm gonna need to set up another little something and that is a power pulse. This should be easy enough, just a little bit of wood and a little bit of copper cables. We can set these up to be delivered to us, let's say two stacks. And now that is also gonna be a problem of the past to craft the power poles. While we are waiting for some more stuff to be crafted, let's maybe go ahead and take care of the coal. All we really need to do is split this up before each line where we want to insert the coal, get this going through there, there and there. 
with a little underground belt right here. So we have the space to actually lead the coal downstairs. So it will be going directly down below here into the yellow belt. Hold on, this first one here is totally wrong. Of course, that should be at the yellow belt where we have our coal input. So something along these lines. Okay, that makes much more sense. And we can also switch to yellow belts here. Another research done, we're diving into uranium ammo. Now let's hook all of these coal lines up and the smelteries should kick in. Very good, just a few materials left to go and then we can get to the next step. Before we continue, I would like to set up two more crafting machines. One is going to be responsible to craft, let's see, oil refineries. And then another one is going to be crafting the chemical plants. We just need basic ingredients for the chemical plant and then additionally some stone bricks here for the refinery. We're gonna keep two stacks of each machine and we just need to extract them here and there. Good, now let's also remove some of the unnecessary disgusting nature here. I'm also gonna order a stack of each of the machines to my inventory and this way we don't have to worry about it any longer. Now let's get started with the oil refineries. I want to leave a little bit of space here. Let's say we can maybe start off right here. And what we need is 15 of those machines. So that's gonna be quite a tall order. I'm gonna have to remove a substantial amount of forest here. Let's maybe use the grenades for certain aspects of it. Looks like we can easily set up 14 of the machines, maybe even a 15th one here at the very top. But for now, let's just check out the input here with the recipe. We need water on the left side and oil on the right side. So if we have something like that, we have two inputs that we can make use of. And the water we can get into the system just like that. I have some oil available right here. Let's connect these, which then means we have the inputs sorted. I'm gonna do the same here with my outputs. So light oil will be extracted here and the heavy oil on the third line. Get these all hooked up and then we can just copy over this design. Good, and now all we need is a bunch of power poles. Hook this all up and once this is connected, all of these should kick in. Oh, actually we need to set up the recipe first. So copy all of that over and now they are gonna kick in. Wonderful. The next step is going to be to set up chemical plants and we want to break down heavy oil into light oil. We need like four machines for this to work properly. Let's try to space them out like so. That looks about right. Get them all hooked up to power recipe heavy oil to light oil. The light oil output we can connect like so and then we just need some heavy oil over there. So if we do this and then that we should be able to accomplish that. Get this hooked up like so and so. Then we're missing a little bit of water, which we can get from here. Wonderful. And that should be the end of the story. So that's another thing out of the way. Now, let me check things up. I try to put things in order in which we are going to require them. But since we're kind of working with a limited space and I cannot just expand it all the way, I'm going to need to be a little bit creative in the design. One thing I already know is somewhere along here, we're going to be needing up to six machines in order to convert the light oil into petroleum. Now let's have a look at the inputs here. So that would be on the left side. I think the easiest way to hook that up. And then on this side, of course, it's the other side. So we'll first have to underground belt it. Good. The light oil is already flowing. So we're going to set up the rest of the power poles. We would be getting the resulting petroleum out of there. And all we need is some access to water, which we should be able to get from here. Here, so this can get going and on the other side we can do something similar here yeah look at that all functional now we got our petroleum output that we can lead directly into here let's say so it shares the same pipe as the other output from the oil refineries now another chemical plant i would like to see is something for the sulfur we just need a little bit yeah just one chemical plant is enough let's say we set that up right here set the recipe uh, luckily enough, this is the right input and then water on the other side. Very nice. And that's all we need for this. Now, before we do anything else, I would like to set up yet another plant and that is going to be crafting the sulfuric acid for which we need additional iron plates, but the sulfur and water are nearby. So I can just bring over the water without issues and then the sulfur will be brought in here with a fast inserter. And then finally, the iron will be brought over, of course, from our smeltery setup. Another research that we can go for, a follower robot count. 
the sulfuric acid itself for one we're gonna need two more chemical plants in order to craft the batteries iron plates and copper plates are gonna be necessary for that as well however the sulfuric acid i can now just input like so for instance and actually thinking about it i want to extract the batteries here on the right side do i Ooh, i might have enough space to make my plastic setup here so I could somehow maybe make use of the same belt there. Before we think about the input of iron and copper, let's maybe think about the setup. We might have to move a few things. Like I want access to lots and lots of plastic. Mm, wait, let me think about it this way. If we have a coal line right here, then I have a better idea where I can set up the plants. What if we started right here? This will give us a little bit more space and then we can bring things on the same belt if necessary. Let me actually see. Plastic. We're probably going to need lots of plastic. Yeah, 19 of these boogers. So if we set them up on a red belt here, then we could also grab the batteries. This is not necessary, but for the batteries, we're going to need the output inserter. That means I can move this belt slightly over. Mm -hmm. I might need the additional space. I think I'm just going to move this one block over like so. And now we need 10 chemical plants for the plastic bars. So I'm going to set them up right there. That means we should easily be able to bring the coal along. Actually, we can just probably take it from here. Let's maybe first of all connect the two lines together. Then we can bring out the coal as well. Mm, actually, I don't like that. Let's go through here. Yeah, that's better. And now we can just bring this over here and feed all of the chemical plants. Let's set this to craft some plastics for us. And then I guess we can do something like this. So we are going to start from here. Use the underground belt so we still have a space left to input the coal. And just like that we should have access to all the necessary materials. Wonderful. Let's input the coal here. And then I guess we can take them out with fast inserters. Now since we're filling up more than half a rep belt, I'm going to bring these materials together. So they will be meeting somewhere here in the center. We'll see. The batteries will also be brought onto this belt. However, I think I can extract them earlier because we only need batteries for one single thing and that is the accumulator. So if I get this to approximately here, let's see what else we need for the accumulator. Some arm plates. Ah, this is perfect because arm plates will be tagging along here as well. So just imagine this line here being an iron line. We can then use that to feed this machine and the battery machines. And then I'm assuming we can use a long-handed inserter to take care of the copper somewhere. So what I want to do here is stop the batteries from actually going through. So we're gonna sort them out here on the right side of the belt. Let's see, batteries. And they will be going here. And they're basically being stopped by the belt contraption. We're still gonna be taking the batteries from this belt here. But the splitter makes sure that we can actually stop it. And then of course the iron would be coming from the other side and we can extract the accumulators right there. So this would then be continuing and I kind of would like to put them on the same belt as the plastic bars we have going on. I think we could go ahead and move this one up. Now for one I will have to bring the plastic downstairs to do something with it but then it can also continue here. And I guess the best way to do that would be something like that and we can connect the two materials together. Okay, not bad. Now I will have to think about actually crafting the circuits. This is gonna take up enormous amount of space. Let me maybe plan this out a little bit. Alrighty, I thought about this for a little bit and I think we just need to do it. I don't know if we have enough space, but let's go ahead and set up the recipe for crafting the electronic circuits. The perfect ratio is three copper cables and two circuits, leaving us with a net rate of zero. So if I get this started right here, I can set up a third, fourth and fourth fifth of these contraptions right and that is still gonna leave me enough space to do something at the bottom and then we need to mirror this i think we can actually leave the top portion b that means if i mirror it somewhere around here we won't even be needing this machine i don't think so we should have enough so now we just keep on mirroring this baby we will be bringing the circuits out here onto a center belt and then I guess with stack inserters we can insert the copper cables and we will be doing that on the other side as well. So now if we check the ratio out here we will be getting around 47 electronic circuits. So that is slightly more than I need and that can actually fit on a blue belt but we're still gonna put it right there. And now if I check the copper input right here it's 
35 plates and 37 on the other side. Yeah, we will have to combine some stuff here. Let me try to do that. So I imagine all of these are coming together. Most of the plates we're going to be using up just to craft the circuits. So I guess what we want to see is an express splitter right here leading in two red belts. And since we need slightly more than a red belt, we're also going to continue this with a blue belt. So this would all be coming down here. I guess we should go ahead and set up the power poles as well. Finally, the stack inserters to bring over the copper cables. And then as of this point, we only have to take care of the iron. I'm not sure I actually left enough space for the iron. Also, we should check just how much we need. Also 47. Wow, that is crazy. Things just get out of hand in this game quite easily. But yeah, essentially that also means we need at least one belt. I think one is gonna do because we slightly overdid it when it comes to the amount of circuit crafting we're doing. But yeah, we're gonna combine these two belts here with a fast splitter. And then I think I'm gonna go through here. Now let's see, in order to achieve everything, I will have to combine two more red belts here but I guess we can just go through here nope <laughs> that's too early yeah there we go this is gonna provide all the copper I think I want to leave enough space just to be sure but if we lead the iron down here then I could easily split it up let's say I split it up here and then we move it over mm, I think I'm gonna move it over one more space like this and now I can lead an underground belt through here and actually input the iron. So far so good, the circuits are being crafted. We can lead this all the way down and we just have to split it up here at each circuit assembler, which of course there are uh, quite a few of. Wonderful, this is the left side already done. We should be able to copy most of it over. So if I just grab this set of inserters and then turn this around, I should be able to just paste it in. And then all I'm missing are the belts right here. And you can see we have just enough space to actually accommodate it. So the only question is, how am I bringing my iron from the left side to the right side here? That is a really good question I'm gonna answer in just a second. Can I flip this? Yeah, look at that. With F you can flip stuff also very convenient. Another research done. We're finally going for the artillery. Yes, indeed. Now, I just realized that these inserters here aren't at the right spot. Yeah, I will probably have to do a little bit of trickery so I can get the copper plates in there. However, I think this is more than possible if we just hop over here. I should have taken care of that issue. No, uh, I need the iron there. Well, in this case, I can actually just split it up here. So do something like that and bring this over. Yeah, that should work out. And now I can use normal inserters. Good, that still doesn't answer the question, how am I getting this over? Maybe one idea would be to connect these two lines a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna be bringing this over to here. We can even go more extreme. We have to save on space a little bit. So if we connect them together here, then we can potentially also have the splitter here. Yeah, actually that's gonna work out. So these are now gonna be split over here and they can follow suit. Wonderful. And that is also gonna allow me to continue the iron line. And we're gonna be bringing this over here. Easy as that. Yeah, look at that. So now we're also providing the right side with the iron. Of course, right here, we'll have to continue and we'll be needing that plastic very soon. But the main thing is we now have a huge circuit production, which is going to be extremely handy. I will be delivering a certain amount of circuits to the right here. Uh, let me clean up. This needs to go, please. Maybe first of all, let's bring down the plastic. Uh, we're not going to be needing coal anymore. So I will be bringing this down here. And I'm assuming for now, I just want to connect these on one belt. My goal is to now go for the advanced circuits, 34 assembling machines. We're not going to be building 34, but we're going to improving them a little bit. So my next step is going to be to set up all of these assembling machines. Let me see. Advanced circuits, those are four machines. We're going to copy this over a couple of times. I've already got 16. We can continue here. I have a little bit more space than I anticipated. So maybe we're going to go up to 32. So that would be 28 and then another set is going to give us 32. Okay, we're going to go with that. And then we're going to feed them here from the top. Now let me see how many copper wires we're going to need. Less than a red belt, that is good. So copper wires I will be bringing in from here and they should be closer to the machine so we can input them with fast inserters. Or rather stack inserters is what I meant. 
And then right here, we're gonna make a little loop-de-loop -loop in order to hop over. And that will be our second input handled by two long-handed inserters. So additionally, we'll have two of them and that means we'll have to replace the power poles. Power poles, we're gonna be needing those. Um, let me craft some more. I'm not automatically crafting them just yet. Good, with that out of the way, we just have to provide the copper cables and we're gonna be snatching some of these lines or dividing them up rather. Maybe we can start somewhere around here. I wanna set up six machines, bunch of stack inserters filling up one belt and that is gonna be the almost full red belt that we need. Get that recipe going and just to be sure, I wanna check the ratio. We need one yellow belt of copper plates. So maybe if we divide this up, we don't even need to go that crazy. I think I'm gonna need some more space here. This is too cramped. So rather add that here. One line should be continuing. Another line should be split again in two. Yeah, wonderful. Now I can bring a yellow line over to feed the right side and one yellow line over to the left side as well. Stack inserters for all of these and finally some power. Connect this to the main grid and that should start crafting immediately. I'm gonna be bringing this over here and we're gonna bring it all the way down to where we need it, which seems to be right here. Yes, bring that over and it's gonna be feeding all of my advanced circuit assemblers. That's what I'm talking about. Just take the crafting materials you need. Okay, let's get some more stuff going. Whoop. I'm not having any speed modules. Where are my speed modules going? Ah, probably here, into the crafting assemblers. That makes sense. In this case, I'm gonna set up another requester chest right here at the very edge of the logistics system. I'm gonna craft myself some more speed modules because we just require them. Get this hooked up to power and then we're gonna extract them the other way and maybe two stacks should be enough. We need at least four of the assemblers to be filled up with speed modules. But now before I continue, I need to take care of stuff we left on the grid. For instance, we still need to craft the accumulators here. What's missing? The batteries are missing, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, where is it coming from? Here. It is missing the water, which, ooh, that doesn't make sense. Unless I was too stupid to hook this up properly there <laughs> okay now everything starts to function also the batteries are being crafted and they should be brought over here to the accumulator stuff okay now we have plastic here and accumulators i will bring these over to the right side but that is not our concern there were other things we weren't able to craft yet um actually this one here i solved yeah, never mind. It actually all looks good now. You know what just occurred to me? We are actually crafting the speed module one in the process of crafting the white science pack. So I'm not going to be needing this actually. We'll have more than enough. I already got 11, so two of the machines we can fill up. Good then, next up, I think I wanna go ahead, connect the processing units, and then at the same time we can do the speed modules. Maybe we're gonna do the speed modules first, because they seem to be quite easy. Just electronic circuits and advanced circuits, and we have that already here. So maybe as a last deed, we're gonna go ahead and extract these. We will not manage to fill up an entire belt here. Yellow is more than enough, and we're gonna be bringing this all the way around around here to where we are probably gonna need it. Wait a second, I have a better idea. We're gonna bring them towards the center, maybe to approximately here. Yeah, I think I like that. I can then take these to the other side and we can use them for our crafting recipe here. Now, I don't want to use the electronic circuits I have on this line. This is reserved, but we do have another line here that I split up earlier. So actually, if we go down here, we might be able to pull something off. Uh, yeah, let's bring these up and these down below. If we check out the recipe here, we're just gonna be needing five of each of the circuits. So this doesn't even need to be a red line. Now moving along, we're gonna be needing more electronic circuits. So I'm not gonna combine them on one line, actually. I first wanted to do that, but I think it's gonna be safer this way. I wanna leave a little bit of space here. Maybe we're gonna start in this location. That would be six, eight, uh, 10 and 12, I believe is what we need. Let's make sure 12 machines. Okay, so these are going to be crafting the speed modules and we can hook these up to the necessary materials with normal inserters on the inside and long handed on the outside. And last but not least, a little bit of power. So as mentioned, those were really easy. And honestly, we can do something similar here. We need nine assembling machines for the processing units. So that's nine and holy cow, this adds up quite nicely. Get those processing units going. I will be feeding them the sulfuric acid from the top. 
probably. They also need both types of circuits, so we can just continue this. Yeah, this is actually very pleasant here. I will extract the circuits here on the outside of the machine, and then just as a friendly reminder, I'm already gonna set up the pipes. I will then bring these two materials together in the very center there, so the processing units and the speed modules will combine. Okay, nice. I like where this is going. The only thing we still need here is the sulfuric acid. And I got a more or less convenient line here. Now, if we're lucky, we might be able to pull something off here. I just need to give myself a little bit more space. Okay, brought it all the way down here. Now, let's see. My goal is probably to bring it somewhere here. Oh, yes, this actually works. Nice. Okay, so we can connect this right there. And I'm just gonna be bringing it to where we need it first, which seems to be right here. Hmm, and then I guess it's not really worth it to go underground at this point. I'm just gonna drag this all the way over and we can use underground pipes at every machine just like that. Nice, okay. What is the next step? Let's have a look at it. We still need radars, low density structures, rocket fuel, solar panels, rocket control units and a satellite. Oh gosh. Alright then, I would say it's time for the next step and for that step I want to take apart these pipes very briefly so I don't accidentally mix up pipes. This line right here is gonna carry some light oil. And what do we want to do with that? We want to craft solid fuel with chemical plants. Now actually there's one thing I forgot before I can do that and that is the steel plate setup. I totally forgot that I have to implement this somewhere and this somewhere I think is gonna be right here. So that will be 5, 10, we can do like 20 and then maybe an additional one right here. Or we're just gonna do the 22. This is gonna result in a little bit of steel, not too too much, so we can put it on a single belt and bring it over. Now before we do anything else, we'll have to snatch up a little bit of coal and then maybe combine the lines here. Let me grab some more, hmm, let me see. How much iron do we even need? 13, so we do need a yellow belt's worth of iron. In this case, we're gonna grab a little bit of iron here. If we take a yellow belt's worth, we should be able to place it on a red belt together with the coal. So just do something like that. And as of this point, we continue with the red belt. Okay, we can just go down. And then I guess we need to make a little bit of space here. Roll this over, feed all of the furnaces this way. Do a little split here. And that actually means we can switch to yellow belts. Actually, it looks like I totally ran out of materials again. So time to go back to my crafting system. Oh yes, my little robots. Feed me, feed me. Wonderful. And now we can simply in and output it like so. Maybe copy this over so it's less agonizing to place these inserters. I should be able to escape the system like so. Very nice. Now that I have an idea where the smelting system is, I know I should leave probably a little bit of space free. Maybe something along these lines should be good and that is going to be solid fuel with light oil. It says we're gonna need 21 machines. I'm more likely to set up 20. Yeah, look at that. We'll have to move this pipe a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is bring the sulfuric acid down first and then we're gonna drag it through these guys. And then somewhere along these lines, I'm gonna swap this with an underground belt and we can hook it up. And I think I have to move this two more blocks over and then I could accommodate all of these machines. So this would all be fuel and then we have to copy this over and do it one more time on the other side. Actually, let me build all the inserters. We might have to use fast inserters to get this out. And now I can just copy this over, flip it around and have another set. I can then bring the light oil pipe all the way over and we can do the same thing on the other side. Just hook this up. And we then collect the fuel on the belt I don't have the space for. Let's just forget this happened. And I'm gonna put this one more block up. And now we can actually accommodate this belt. Good, now I just need a convenient way to hook up the light oil. This doesn't seem like an easy task, but also I do not mind if it is a little bit wiggly and jiggly. So I'm sure we'll somehow make it fit. I guess instead of going down, we could just move over until we find an opportunity. Like right here, this seems to be good enough. We can just hop over, make a little bit of space and then add another pipe like so and so. Okay, not my best work. However, let's find a good spot to hook this up to. Light oil, you're gonna move over and feed my machines. Yeah, look at that. Now they are functioning. 
Now at this point I think we need to take care of a few little things such as the radar. For the radar we need some iron gears. Let's just set up a bunch of machines. We could for instance have one machine right here that is gonna craft gears and then another machine right on top. The radar is gonna need iron plates, gears and electronic circuits. Ooh. Let me think, electronic circuits, we can take them from here. Yeah, that is something that should be possible. I'm gonna move these pipes over one block and that gives me enough space to route this through everything. Move up here and right there, we now have access to electronic circuits as well. Gonna power this up. Let's see what we need. Some stuff there and there. Gonna power this up with a big power pole here and then we have an inserter for the gears gears go directly into the radar then we take the plates from there and we also take the electronic circuits. Next up we also need solar panels so also additional copper plates are gonna be necessary and I think I might want to combine them together with the radar on one single belt because we are gonna be needing that in order to craft the satellite. So make this our solar panel crafting. Now at this point I think it's time to introduce the plastic that we left here and we can just make our way through the mess as good as possible. Uh, let's see, I should be able to make this hop right there. Wonderful, okay, that actually works out. What I would like to see here is the plastic going on its own belt. So I'm gonna filter that out on the right side there. And I think it might be wise to connect these two lines together. So we have plastic and steel on one belt. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I'm also gonna need some copper. So we bring this down first and then we snatch up some copper somewhere. Right now this might be a little bit unbalanced. If I need more copper from the other lines, I'm gonna get it. But if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna be needing a lot more. Considering these three machines already take 7.5 and then I'm gonna be needing about 22 more for the low density structure. That actually adds up perfectly. So we can use up the first copper for the copper cables and then the rest of the copper is gonna be for these two machines. So I just have to continue this belt. But once everything gets going, I will have to make sure it gets a full red belt. So I might have to upgrade a few things here and we still might have to tap into the other lines there. We'll see. For now, this is just gonna come down here and that is actually gonna make the routing a little bit easier. Uh, actually, let me move that over. Ooh, I messed that up big time. Copper, steel and electronic circuits. We should have access to everything if we move this over a little bit. Get a long-handed inserter here. And then we have copper plates and the steel as well. So now we can get both the solar panel and the radar on top of a belt. And then we should be able to continue these three materials in order to build the low density structures. That means if we do a little something like this and that, then start setting up our machines. Let me see, just how many items are you gonna snatch up? We need 20 copper plates. That kind of makes me want to switch the design here. So if we just set up a red belt here and then dedicate the left side to be copper plates only, then this should sort itself out, right? Yeah, look at that little switcheroo. I love it. So let's get some of these rolling as well. Also extract these on the other side and then I guess we can just copy this over a couple of times. About eight on this side and then we're gonna do another eight on the other side. Of course the belts are just gonna go all the way around supplying these assemblers. Get that other line going as well and hook you up. Just like that. Mmm, yes, that's what I like to see. After this, another huge crafting project needs to be done and that is the rocket control unit. Luckily, we just need speed modules and processing units. We have those already ready. However, we're gonna be needing 24 assemblers. I'm gonna need the space for a belt and an inserter. So maybe we can get this started right here. And then I'm gonna try to set up 12 of these machines on this side. And that would be 12. Okay, it's quite a tall order. And we'll be crafting some rocket control units. Yes, indeed. Just gonna need one inserter in and out. And then we copy this over one more time for the other side. Rocket control units are gonna be going up, I think. Yeah, which means at this point we need the incoming resources. Now, this is not a convenient spot anymore. I think I'm gonna be turning this around. And then instead we're gonna be using this spot right here as of this point. I should be able to split things up and then we're just gonna bring this around. So this is gonna go over here to the other side and just like that we have these materials hooked up. Wonderful. Get all of this crafted. 
And that was actually the last large crafting array we had to build for this recipe. No, I'm missing the fuel. Oh my gosh, I knew I forgot something. Also, we need the rest of the light oil for this and just some solid fuel. Now, at some point, I need some additional blue circuits and I think I'm just gonna be extracting them cheaply here. But I think I'm gonna do it here at the very end. Give me some blue circuits, that would be nice, and they will be traveling down here. Actually, wait, that's stupid. I might not even want that. Let's forget about that. Well then, I would say it's time to give this the finishing touches with a bunch more machines. We're gonna be needing 42 machines. No, that's not right. 26. Well, honestly, this could be a little bit of a problem. So we're not gonna build 26, but we're actually gonna fill them up with a bunch of modules. Maybe we can simulate this here. So if we just added a bunch of speed one modules, the very cheap ones, then we only need 14 assemblers. So I think that's gonna be worth it. Fuel, fuel right here. Rocket fuel, that's what we need. Now, apart from the solid fuel, we're also gonna be needing light oil. We should be able to easily grab this from down here. Yeah, that's gonna be no issue. So maybe we first install the solid fuel and see if that, and then work around the pipes. Solid fuel, we can snatch up from here. That should be no issue. Belt over right there and belt over right here. Now, let's see. First of all, we need to split this up. So one line can continue up and the other line would be going around here, feeding the first set of machines. It's a 30 second crafting time, so maybe we can even use long-handed inserters for this. We can have them like so and then work the pipes around them. Honestly, this is not convenient at all. I'm gonna be moving it a little bit over to the right side. Now I have a little bit more space to work with and we can do the underground belt technique. So just hopping over every pipe slot. Yeah, honestly, this is a much, much better plan. We can then extract the rocket fuel out of the other side. And finally, we should be able to copy this over. Just have the same system on the other side. Oh, actually, let's undo that. And instead of rotating it, I'm gonna flip it. Well, flip it and then rotate it. Okay, now that makes sense. And the belt goes into the right direction. We can hook this up. Now for the light fuel part, let's just get this connected and we can move up, do the same thing upstairs. One long pipe connecting all machines. Love it, just fix that little part. Okay, we're ready to go. How much rocket fuel is this gonna produce? Oh wait, we need to insert the modules first. I should have a couple of them, but I'm gonna be needing more and we should get more right here. Oh. Why do we have blue circuits on this? Maybe that was just from the beginning when I did the switch. Yeah, that could be. Either way, I should now have enough modules to fill the rest of the machines. And now we should be crafting just enough. Uh, 72, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, 1.2 per second. Artillery is finished. Oh, this is actually a glorious milestone. But let's continue with a breaking force 7. And then I'm gonna be putting this on a belt going to the left, right? Uh, let me actually see. Yeah, we need that for the actual science pack. So the rocket units, the low density structures need to go up. Mm, let me see, low density structures, they are still hanging around here. So we should bring them over to the right side. Now, since we have so many materials that we actually require right in this vicinity, I think I'm gonna be building the satellites here. So let me just put that here theoretically. And that means we're gonna be taking a little detour. We're gonna be going up first and then over here. Let me get a red belt. Now we should be able to grab these materials right there. In here we want to build satellites. Uh, where do I find these? Right there. Satellite. Good. Next up we have solar panels, accumulators and radars. They should be nearby. Let me see. Right here I have something. Here we have the accumulators. And then on this belt right here I have solar panels and radars. Um, let's see. This is not going to be extremely convenient, but we can achieve it by doing something like that. Oh, geez. What am I doing? I, I guess we can have several lines going to it. We just need to bring this close to the satellite and then we need to continue the low density structures. Oh, no. This is picking up solid fuel. No, thank you. We can then bring this over here and this theoretically needs to continue. So we do something like that and now we can input all of these materials. I think we're still missing something. Uh, let me just get that pole installed. Okay, yeah, oh, no processing units. I knew this was gonna bite me in the butt. Let's get a little underground belt here going. That means I should be capable of getting those processing units. 
We just install that filter inserter and get the processing units out of there. We can then lead them across the crafting system here to another underground belt here. And now I can just lead the circuits right on the other side of the belt. Okay, and now I actually have all of the crafting materials together. Let's maybe upgrade these guys since they need to pick up like hundreds of items. However, afterwards we can get these out. Let me check something else. Low density structures are just gonna be 1.1. So let's combine these two items. I can go ahead and put these on one belt, like so. And now to do the rocket, we have the three materials right here. And then the rocket control units we already have ready. So let me bring this one more block up like so and then we are gonna continue i'm just gonna bring these lines over here and then i guess at this point we can move up and get these materials ready for the rocket wow we actually kind of did it now we can go ahead and craft the rocket silo look at that i'm actually astonished we managed to fit this in here now let's grab some materials we need quite a few in order to get this rocket silo going as a matter of fact, I don't have enough space. I'm gonna disable personal logistics so my robots don't mess with my inventory. This way I can get rid of a few things and... Oh, no, no, I thought... Okay, so the trash isn't disabled. That means I'm gonna be putting that into a storage bin and now I have proper space to get those materials. One thing I totally forgot to start crafting is the concrete. We just need a little bit of it, but we need iron ore to do so. The water is not gonna be a problem. To get some iron permanently in the logistics crafting system, we can simply expand this line until we are in the system, which we are now. So I'm gonna be picking that up and putting it into a passive provider chest. And now I should already have plenty of concrete here. We just need a thousand pieces. Now I'm just missing the concrete, put in some speed modules. Maybe while we wait, it's time to balance a couple of things. For instance, I noticed that if we check the entirety of the line here, we're gonna be needing 27 circuits. That means it is a necessity to actually upgrade this belt. So as of this point right here, this should all be upgraded. And this entire belt here should be upgraded. This way all of the machines will be fed accordingly. Okay, looks like all of them are crafting now. That's good. Yeah, one problem right now is that the crafting isn't smooth enough for me to judge where the bottlenecks are. But I suspect one bottleneck for sure. And that is that we need to include another line of copper into this part. So right now I'm only taking the copper from this smeltery in order to feed the entirety of what's coming after this. And I think we should improve on that by splitting this belt one more time. And then maybe we can sneakily make our way over here. Uh, this is not gonna add up unless I give this a little bit more space, which we can do. I think I'm gonna have to split it a little bit later, maybe right here. This way I can make the two lines merge right in this spot. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, with that out of the way, the stones should be crafted. Concrete, give me enough, please. 986, so we're almost there. Come on, 99 and 1000. Wonderful, we should be able to craft the rocket silo. Great, let me grab my stuff and re-enable the logistics system. Very nice, let's get that silo built. Like right here, I don't care, get out of the way. And look at that, we even got our first satellite ready. Good times. So I guess for now, it doesn't really matter where we place this. When we're dealing with multiple silos, we'll have to be a little bit more careful. But right now, all we have to do is input the materials. How wonderful is that? And we can see the silo is now charging up and it's gonna have to do that a hundred times. So we basically need 10 of each of the materials and then additionally one satellite in order to get those white science packs back. Mm, I see one problem. The white science packs will have to travel a freaking long distance and I'm not sure we can make it through all this stuff here. Let's get a stack inserter rolling here and this is just gonna be brought over to my science labs eventually. Now while I'm waiting for the silo to charge up, I'm gonna be taking out a couple of nests that are too close for comfort and then I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I managed to mess this up a little bit. I now realized why we have the blue circuits here. And of course it is because of this machine. So maybe we can disable the machine and just enhance the other ones. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. So I'm just gonna get rid of this one. We needed nine assembling machines to get 1.1 items per second. Right now we are getting only one. 
four speed modules to this, maybe that's already enough. Look at that, 1.2. Okay, I'm taking that. With that out of the way, I should now also get these rocket control units going and that is the last that I'm gonna need. Just two more percentage points and we are done. Also, by the way, I just started the very last research, so this added up quite nicely, the atomic bomb. And after this, we'll just have to go for the upgrades and this way, the mega base status is even gonna be possible to make the robots really efficient, to make the mining more efficient, but... Here we go. Oh, wait, wait. Did it auto launch? No. Maybe it's just putting up the rocket and it's not gonna really launch it. <laughs> oh man, I haven't played this game in a while, but this is an exciting moment. Should we do it? The satellite is in there already, so that's good. I think I'm gonna launch it. Let's do it. Three, two, one, blast off. Oh, yes. Oh, guys, that's what I'm talking about. I've been missing this and just imagine in the future we're gonna be launching a rocket like every few seconds. There she goes. How wonderful. And right now we should have completed the game. Wow, that took me 30 hours. Did not feel like it. And of course I destroyed like quadruple the amount of nature than biters. <laughs> but yeah, here are the stats if you want to have a look through them. We created our first white science pack now. And look at that. They are now being output. We get a thousand per rocket launch. And I think to make this a little bit faster here, we're gonna have to use fast inserters. To wrap this up, we'll have to bring our science packs over. We might have to use some blue belts in order to make the distances. <laughs> okay. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, nice. Looks like my last autosave was just right now. <laughs> Okay, this is uh, possibly the longest journey any of my materials are going through. But honestly, I did not think about the consequences here. Okay, guys, we almost made it. The journey is over and we can add them to our research labs. For instance, with long-handed inserters, that should not be an issue. They are being input. Of course, right now we don't use them, but right after this research, we definitely will. Good. In the next episode, we will be debugging the entire system in order to check out the bottlenecks and fix them. I should have the overall correct ratios with all the factories, but sometimes there are a few things that are missing or bottlenecks that I need to address. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on this. I would definitely appreciate it. But with that out of the way and our starter base completely completed, I wish you a nice time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.